Hey everybody, this is Jen. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about kefir. What is kefir? How do you make it? What do you do with it? Well, I'm going to take you to my kitchen and we're going to find out right here on Garden Jen's Journey. So what is kefir? Kefir is a rich probiotic drink. Uh, there's two different kinds. There's a water kefir, which I did a video of and I will link to above. And then there is the more popular dairy kefir. You usually will find it in your stores. It's uh, in the yogurt section because it's a type of yogurt. It's a liquid yogurt. So that is technically what kefir is. It's a liquid yogurt probiotic drink. And I'm making a mess here because I shook this up earlier and it's leaky. So this is a batch of kefir that I had made and then put in my fridge. Um, so I'll show it to you. So it looks like it's it's curdled, but it's not really curdled. It's cultured. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's uh, thicker than just milk because it is cultured. It is more like a yogurt. Uh, you can use this in place of uh, yogurt in quite a few recipes. Uh, you just reduce the amount of liquid because this is kind of liquidy. Um, but a lot of people just drink it straight up. Um, I personally do not recommend drinking it plain um, because the, the taste is something to be uh, desired. <laughs> but um, you can mix it with your favorite fruit puree um, and make it flavored that way. Um, it's just a very good way to get your probiotics. So in this video I'm going to show you how I make kefir uh, using milk kefir grains. They're little tiny grains, and I'll show you a picture. And those uh, little grains, and they're not actually grains, they're just, they just uh, have the texture of grains, that's why they're called that. Um, they take the lactose that is in your dairy milk, and, uh, and then they culture your dairy milk into a more thicker consistency yogurt type product. So uh, a lot of people who are lactose intolerant actually can drink kefir because uh, the, uh, the grains, the kefir uh, organisms eat the lactose in order to make the kefir product. So that's a good thing for those who are lactose intolerant, but still want a very good probiotic. So I'm going to show you how exactly I make the kefir. So I do my batches of kefir in uh, these pint jars. It just works easier for me uh, to keep the control that I need to make sure that the product cultures correctly and uh, doesn't culture too fast um, or uh, doesn't not culture throughout the whole batch because it's smaller um, it works better. By the way I will put a link in the description box below where you can order your kefir grains from. I got them from Mr. and Mrs. Kefir on Amazon. I do a hope eventually to be selling my own kefir because when you make kefir and you make it regularly uh, the organisms actually multiply because they are living organisms that are feeding so they do multiply and you can uh, divide them and give them away or or sell them 
two other individuals. So hopefully I'll be able to start selling kefir and you'll find that in my Etsy shop eventually. <laughs> so, but you can see, I think you can see that uh, how chunky this is. And it's actually not quite chunky yet. <clears throat> this is chunky, but not too late. Um, when the curds separate from the whey completely and it looks very curdled, then it's a little bit too far past its prime to be really used as kefir. But it's a great product to use to feed your animals, uh, your livestock, because it's still a very good probiotic, just not very good for humans to consume. So I'm going to show you what I do with this. First, I gently shake it up. And it gets the solids and the liquids mixed back together. And again, this is only if it hasn't gone too far. If it's if it looks like curdled milk um, and completely separated, you're not going to get it back together. But this is at the perfect point. And see how it's now mixed nicely together again? Kind of like what I had just shown you. This is how you know that this is perfect. I'm going to get my strainer and well, I will show you what is next. Okay, so I have my gear ready to uh, get my kefir separated and get a new batch started. One thing I need to emphasize is when you're working with kefir or other fermented type products, you want to use plastic. Do not use metal because metal actually damages the microorganisms that are fermenting your products. So use plastic. Um, I got this strainer on Amazon. I will put a link to it in the description box below. And then this just a plastic bowl and spatula I got from my local store. So we're going to take our jar of cultured milk and we're going to pour it in here. And you can see it's still got some chunks in there. So these larger chunks right here, these are your key for grains. And the rest that's kind of liquidy, that's just the cultured yogurt. And we're going to go ahead and gently scrape this strainer to work the rest of the cultured yogurt through. But uh, the, the key for grains will stay on top of the strainer. So I'm not pressing down. I'm scraping up and around to work that yogurt through, but not damaging the actual kefir grains. What's left is the kefir grains. They're, uh, they're happy, happy because they multiply quite a bit, um, almost twice the, twice the amount of what I put in here. So I'm going to take half, take this large piece here. It's about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half, and I'm going to put it in a new jar with some fresh milk. So this is my whole milk. It is pasteurized. You can use raw milk, but it's best if you mix the raw milk with some pasteurized milk. You do not want ultra pasteurized milk, otherwise this will not work. So we're going to go ahead and just put our kefir grains in there. I'll put a top on it and a ring. Then we're going to gently shake again to get the kefir throughout the milk and we're going to set this in a warm place for uh, depending on how warm you are between 8 and 20 hours 
and if you have to move it to a cooler place if it's uh, culturing too fast uh, usually I end up putting it in, in the fridge overnight because it's just at the cusp of being cultured enough and not and uh, I don't want it curdling too far overnight when I'm sleeping um, but yeah uh, 8 to 24 hours until you start seeing it uh, get thick or start uh, curdling and um, then go ahead and strain it out just like I did then we're just going to take what we strained and we're going to pour it into a clean glass jar and then we're going to store this in the refrigerator with a cap on just like I showed you and this will keep for about a week after that uh, feed it to your livestock or uh, uh, you know dump it down the drain I would not consume it after that so that is how you make milk kefir I hope this video was informative if it was please give it a thumbs up and share it with others who might be interested in a neat little way to make their own probiotic drink at home I thank you for following me on my journey today if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button so you can stick with me and follow along on other tips, tricks, and just vlogs that I share on this journey. And as always, I hope that wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. Bye-bye.